Welcome back to another video. This is Anxiety Hacks number six, Rester Size with Dr. Scott Monk. We've been working on our eight R's. We're on number four now, Rebuild. Exercise for muscle growth, not for fitness. The eight R's, the first eight R's, Refuel, Rehydrate, Replenish, and Rebuild are all designed to repair the physical side of your body. Number five, six, and seven, Restore, Relax, and Remember are for your emotional, spiritual side. And relocate is for prevention. Say no to high stress environments. I want to introduce you to a new term called allostatic load. Allostatic load is the wear and tear on the body which accumulates as an individual is exposed to repeated or chronic stress. That's the fancy word for what we've been defining as adrenaline dominance. When fight or flight signals happen too often or take way too long to turn off, a part of the brain called the amygdala gets stuck in the on mode and becomes paranoid and jumpy. Here's an infographic showing the amygdala up on the right. Now the amygdala has been trained to expect the presence of a higher degree of stress stimulation through a process called operant conditioning. So the more stress, the more fight or flight that's present, the more likely your brain is going to be stuck in that mode in the on switch. It's called operant conditioning and is a very addictive type behavior. Again, the infographic, when we have the amygdala firing all the time in response to fight or flight, you end up with perpetual adrenaline surges, which leave you stuck in the fight or flight response. So instead of adrenaline and the many other stress called neuroendocrine chemicals only being called forth in a time of need, they are ever present having been trained to always be alert and active. Anxiety disorders, phobias, panic attacks, and dozens of other stress-related symptoms began with operant conditioning continue with adrenaline dominance and increase your total allostatic load. That's the stress, wear and tear on your body. To break the auto anxiety adrenaline dominance chemistry, you have to balance your core four. That's genetics, emotions, lifestyle, and your chemistry itself. So here's what adrenaline dominance looks like in the core four. Everything is on fire. We start to balance our chemistry. We see that the flames dim down a little bit. If we get our lifestyle squared away, the flames dim down a little more. If we get our emotions under control, reduce our anxiety and our stressful life situations, the flames are getting quite small now. And if we do all three of those, that is the best way to support your genetics and cool off the core four and be balanced. Pain equals no gain. We've all heard this term. It is the exact opposite of what we want to do when we're trying to calm the fight or flight response. Strenuous exercise tells your body that it's supposed to stay in fight or flight. Doing things that calm fight or flight and other things that perpetuate fight or flight does very little good. So if you're changing your chemistry and you're going to sleep, you're drinking more water, but you go to the gym and you do a spin class for an hour, you've ruined everything you've tried to calm down and accomplish. If fight or flight has been an issue for years, then it is time to go all in. That includes exercise. How do I know if my exercise is too intense? We can tell from your heart rate. Here is the heart rate equation. Take the number 180 and subtract your age. Now subtract another five points if you have chronic illnesses, chronic pain, anxiety, or high stress. For example, a 50-year-old female with a high-stress job, insomnia, and digestive complaints. We're going to take our 180. We're going to subtract 50. That equals 130. But we're also going to take another 5 off of that 130 because of her lifestyle situation. So her total heart rate should be in a range of 115 to 125. Use a heart rate monitor to make sure you're staying within this range while you are exercising. But what kind of exercise should I be doing? Remember, because of the core four imbalances, the body has been trained to keep the fight or flight response turned on. Fight or flight uses sugar and burns muscle, so high intensity exercise will do the same. Therefore, the entire oxygen using fat burning aerobic system needs to be reestablished and the anaerobic non-oxygen system needs to be shut off. With all of this in mind, aerobic weightlifting becomes the exercise of choice. Well, what is aerobic weightlifting? Well, only the big muscle groups are worked out and only for one set per group. 
More sets can be added after several weeks once you've started to begin building your aerobic base, oxygen using fat burning base. So here's what an example may look like. You're gonna warm up for about 10 minutes. Then your first set, you might do something like lat pull downs. That's using the big muscles underneath your arms at your sides. Your second set might be a dumbbell press. That's using your big chest muscles in the front. Your third set is dumbbell curls. That's using your big biceps in your front of your arms. And your fourth set might be a tricep push down. That's using the muscles on the back of your arms. Finally, your fifth set would be body weight squats. Each of these sets takes less than a minute with five minutes of rest in between each set. That's a total time of 25 minutes in the gym. I mentioned warming up. Warming up is necessary in order to prepare the body for exercise and to prevent injury. Warming up also begins the fat burning process by promoting the release of free floating fatty acids, the desired energy source. That's what you want to get rid of in the first place is the fat. Warming up should always happen first and is as simple as a slow, easy walk for 10 minutes. Up to 80% of the blood in the organs will be transferred to the muscles during exercise. So warming up prior to intense exercise allows this fluid transfer to happen gradually. Also, exercise generates vast quantities of metabolic waste products. Warming up ensures that a sufficient amount of blood is circulating prior to exercise so these byproducts can be shuttled to the liver for detoxification and elimination. Don't run ahead. I feel fine and can easily do another set, I hear patients say all the time. You probably can, but don't. Building muscle is a fat-burning, oxygen-using metabolism, so keep it slow. Think draft horse pulling a cart, not Kentucky Derby thoroughbred. In the first four to six weeks, resist the temptation to do more, even when enough strength and stamina are present to do so. Just wait. I've watched so many patients crash and burn because they ran ahead too fast. You do not want to flip on the adrenaline switch. You'll ruin all your hard work. So keep that in mind. Stay slow. It's, your, your changes are going to happen sooner than you think, but you have to be patient. Slow and steady wins the race. This type of restorative training is highly effective as long as the total exercise time is short, at least for the first four to six weeks. If you do too many exercises without enough rest, again, you're gonna turn on adrenaline in order to manage what the body now perceives to be the survival response. You're gonna keep your body thinking it's supposed to stay in fight or flight. So as the body transforms and reprograms itself based on this new type of training, it will soon demonstrate the benefits through increased strength, quicker heart rate recovery between sets, you'll lose weight, your hormones will balance out, you'll sleep better, you'll get stronger. You'll see it all happen in a very short period of time. At this point, once you've started to see all these improvements, you can add more sets and a little more time. You can do that in a steady, methodical way. That's the summary of Restercise. I have an in-depth article on my website, drscottmonk.com. Be sure to go there, type in the word Restercise, and you can read the rest of what I have to say. Things like, what's the best time to exercise? What's the best way to manage my blood sugar when I exercise? How do I measure myself to see if my heart rate is improving? That's called a maximum aerobic function test. So go read that article and I tell you those details. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you can pick up my book on drscottmonk.com. We'll see you at the next video.